What's the crack, Les? Welcome back to another pack review. This time we're taking a look at the Spanish Deluxe League Selection Pack. Look, there's a couple of players in here that are worth it if you are a newcomer and if you are maybe like mid-game, if you've got a fairly decent squad, uh, such as Modric, De Jong. We've also got Cavani, who we'll get to look at in a second, who can be quite beastly in the air with the way the game has gone at the moment. I think the pick of them is probably Jimenez or Fekir. They're absolutely amazing players if you are looking to get a little bit of a different challenge in your Dream Team squad, right? You know, they're not completely overpowered, but they have got some excellent abilities and stats. Pau Torres, this is, this is a fairly good pack. You can obviously spin all of these. You can clear this agent and get every single one of these players. Do I recommend them above standard players for GP? Check out my English version pack where I talk really in-depth about that and compare them to the standard version of players. And the same kind of knowledge and information applies to that, to be fair. Um, so we are going to start off with uh, this guy, the left back, Javi Galan. Now, we're not going to spend too much time, lads, because I don't think that this guy is going to be worth putting into your team, right? He's got B form. He's got a wavering form as well as B rating this week. But his stats, you know, when we actually do train him up, they're very average, man, for a left back at this stage in the game. Even if you are starting off, you know, you can buy a player for about 200,000, which isn't a lot of GP now, that you would be able to just get pretty, pretty easily. Um... You know, this guy doesn't have any stats that go into the 90s apart from stamina and balance. He does have 88 acceleration, which is quite decent, and 82 tackling. He's not bad. I mean, he's not obviously the worst. Um, he is an offensive fullback as well, but I think he's going to struggle against the top top rated wingers we also have a Nisri. this guy obviously we remember from morocco's world cup run fairly decent player obviously we know what we're going to be doing with him is just pumping up his headering ability and getting him into the box as often as we can as a goal poacher right him and cavani are very similar how we've trained him up you're not going to get big dribbling or passing or speed stats with these two guys also we've got cavani here where is he uh he is here so the two of them are very similar right Cavani is slightly better we've got 90 finishing 92 header 90 offensive awareness kick and power jump physical contact obviously the speed and the acceleration they're not you know they're not bad uh in terms of a player that you're going to be having as a goal poacher obviously he's got heading long range drive he's got first time shot one touch pass track back and fighting spirit so I do like that I do like that um Cavani has got a lot of those stats. I think Inessary is, is going to be very similar. They're kind of similar height, similar style. Uh, obviously, Inessary is going to be a little bit taller, but they are both goal poachers. Obviously, the form is going to be a big one here. And the fact that this guy does not have one touch pass, I would probably say Cavani is the better option here um, because he's kind of more of a, of a one trick pony with the 90 finishing and 92 header. Even though this guy does have 93 jump and an 88 header, I do think Cavani is slightly better for that aerial bombardment in. We also have Bresh Mendez. This guy is probably the worst pick in the pack, um, to be honest with you, lads. There was a nominating contract version of him way back when, um, which was quite good. He was 79 overall. This guy does start uh, here with the 80 overall, but I think that this version was slightly better because of the levels and the low pass and offensive awareness getting a little boost. Obviously, this guy does have 90 team playstyle as well, but for me, yeah, he's nothing to really shout home about. We have Danny Carvajal from Real Madrid. Now, Carvajal is kind of an interesting one, lads, right? Because when we go back here and we just take a look at his in his in-game, right? He does have unwavering form. He does have nice player skills with the pinpoint crossing and outside curler. That means if you're playing him right back, which you should be because it's the only register position that he's primarily focused in on, I do think that he can get a lot of crosses in with that early crosser and the outside curler and crossing. So you can, you know, cut back and then cross the ball in with the right foot, outside of the right foot, as you go up the byline, cut back, instead of crossing on the right foot, you can go outside curler, and, you know, steer the ball in swinging, rather than out swinging, if that makes sense, he also has sliding, tackle, fighting spirit, and the thing I like about Danny Carvajal, from having played with him, is he seems to get a lot of goal line clearances, with the AI, where they just literally defend for you, so I do like his card, and I do think that he is a good card, a good right back, very solid, you know, you've got that offensive awareness, defensive awareness, and tackling, and aggression, all very key stats, that are kind of close to each other, within, you know, between 77 and 80, and then you've got speed, acceleration, balance, and stamina, with V2.4, they've obviously made a lot of changes to the stamina, so this guy is going to be able to get up and down and be an engine man, we've got Jimenez, so I actually think Jimenez is probably the pick of these uh, packs, lads, I honestly think he's an absolute monster, Heading, man marking, interception, blocker, area superiority, acrobatic clearance, sliding tackle, and fighting spirit. He's not massively tall, like he's not huge. Um, we do have Pau Torres in this as well. 
uh, which is here. Now, he's fairly tall compared to um, Jimenez, and he does have every other stat apart from interception. Uh, so I do think that these two are kind of very similar. You know, one is build-up, obviously, and the other is destroyer. Destroyer is a little bit more aggressive, as you can see, as is his stats there. But look at Jimenez's individual stats, man unbelievable stats 90 offensive aware defensive awareness 91 tackling 96 aggression and 93 uh engagement right if you're not a good defender if you don't like you know manually defender defending and you do a lot of pressing and you do a lot of stuff that the ai does for you you let the ai just kind of have it and you either defend with your left or right back a lot of the time to close gaps or your dmf as a man marker or a deep anchor man right if you do a lot of that i genuinely would probably say to take away one or two of these and pump up his defense as high as you possibly can with the aggression and the defensive awareness, right? We can get aggression to 99 uh, if we really want to with this card, you know, because we have one or two more left to go here um, with the dribbling. We don't really need that. We're going to be just booting the ball away with this guy, to be honest with you. And speed wise, once we have, you know, 70 stamina, I'm not too concerned about the speed. So we could go that route of having a defensive beast at the back, 92 defensive awareness, 93 tackling, 98 aggression, and 95 defensive engagement. I mean, I don't know if there's a better center back in the game at the moment with the amount of player skills he has, his mobility, his header, his jump, his stamina being 70, which is fine for a center back. He mightn't last the whole game, but for the first 70 minutes, you're going to have one of the best center backs in the game. Pau Torres is in a similar position, right? He's got less levels to go. You can see here, he goes to, or sorry, he's got one more level to go. He is taller, so you don't need to upgrade his aerial strength as much because his just natural animations will kick in. And also with the dribbling, we have three onto dribbling here. If you just boot the ball when you're in the backs, you can bring up his uh, defending even more to 91 tackling, 85 aggression, 92 defensive engagement, and 93 defensive awareness. But he's faster, man. He's more mobile even at that height. He is an extremely, extremely good player. Both players do have different standard forms and unwavering form Jimenez has got standard form Pau Torres is unwavering form but they are very similar players and you know Pau Torres is kind of similar to Van Dyke, whereas I would say Jimenez is kind of similar to the likes of Kunde them type of you know Alaba really aggressive players to get the ball back with their animations we've also got Fakir this guy is a very interesting AMF you know we've been bombarded with brilliant AMFs but again you look at the stats the core stats 82 acceleration and offensive awareness we've also got 80 curl to be able to get those shots in if you get into the box to finesse shot in excellent player skills you know really good form and unwavering form tight possession dribbling in the 90s balance in the 90s and yeah i think the rest of his stats are exceptional for a player that you could get you know quite cheap now his standard version is very similar to this as well um it's not going to be too different different to this card but obviously you know when you train it up max it is going to take a little bit more training to get him to that point and moving on we do have Modric. so we're into the last kind of stage now we've got Modric, simon and uh de Jong, right Modric, amazing player lads he you know don't worry about his tackling stats or his aggression stats this guy can win a lot of ball back for you um and you just look at the attack stats there that he has as well as the player skills one touch pass weighted pass true pass and interception as well even though he doesn't have any defensive stats to back that up he does have that player skill he also has exceptional on the ball dribbling double touch he's got shooting shots shooting skills everything that you could possibly need and on top of that as well he's not that slow man he's 78 acceleration Frankie de Jong is obviously kind of the counterpart of that then. They're very similar players, except de Jong, I would say, is more of a passer than Modric. Modric is kind of box-to-box, -box, I would say. Um, they both are orchestrators, but I would say that de Jong is kind of more methodical. He seems slower on the ball and on the pitch. Uh, Modric is more kind of an all-action Swiss Army knife in the middle of the pitch that when you get the ball with him, he's just so good going forward. That has probably got to do with his offensive awareness, which is 82, and then obviously the tight possession at 95, whereas De Jong doesn't have those stats quite as high, especially with the offensive awareness, even though he's faster than Modric by just a little bit. And last but not least, we've got Simon. I mean, they always include these type of goalies, man. He's just, in my opinion, he's not really worth training up if you get him. Obviously, he goes to 94 overall. He's not bad. I mean, he's not bad. The Spanish version that they released is extremely similar to this guy. Uh, he's a fairly tall goalkeeper as well. Uh, he does kind of... He's a little bit better than the than the player of the week one that they release and his his standard card is obviously going to be better but they did have a different version of him here as well so it's up to you guys um 
whether or not you think this guy is worth training up but that is it for the spanish league selection i would say if i had to probably yeah i would say the italian selection there's probably some good players in that uh if you want to check out that review and the english selection but i would say the spanish selection for overall quality i would say is probably the best in my opinion because you've got the Bruyne and um you know you've got the Bruyne in the english one but i think modric and the young are as good as him obviously hernandez in the italian one i think pau torres and jimenez are probably better than hernandez because they're center backs and you can get a lot of really good left backs in the game so let me know what you guys think i'll be back quite soon with another video hope you enjoyed the video we are going to be watching the united game later so i'll have my thoughts on that united versus liverpool and uh yeah hopefully we uh we get a good game out of that and i will talk to you later lads see you monday peace